Representative Hasegawa, how are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. Good. So we understand that you had a very successful town hall meeting. Yes, we did. Yeah, it was at uh, CMAR up there in uh, Seattle in South Park, and we had a great turnout. A lot of uh, lively discussion, conversation about the different issues we're facing down here in Olympia, but especially on the um, revenue question and the budget cuts that everybody's been hearing about. There's a lot of apprehensiveness out there. So I see that you have an interesting chart right here. Actually, this is a very good conversation starter because in order to explain the budget situation and how our revenues have been dropping due to the uh, depression that we're facing right now, uh, we wanted to point out, so this half is our revenue piece pie, this is our spending pie. This has to equal that. And as you can see, 55.4% of the state's revenue comes from a sales tax. Anytime you buy anything, pays a sales tax. This is considered a very regressive system. You can see how property tax only amounts to this small blue portion of the state's budget here. Business and occupation taxes is this segment here. So the people who are buying everything is funding the majority of our state's uh, revenue and our programs. Um, we call it regressive because whether you can afford to pay the tax or not, you have to pay the tax if you want to buy the goods that you need to survive on a daily basis. So we got into that whole conversation. We got into the conversation about how we're spending money here. So as you can see, almost 42% of the state's general fund goes to funding schools. This segment here is higher ed, 10.7%. So when you add the two, about 53% total is going to our education system. This segment here, less than a third, goes to um, DSHS and providing social and health services. Much of this budget is constitutionally protected against cuts. And with a $9 billion shortfall that we're facing right now, if you figure maybe 58% of the budget is protected against cuts, that means $9 billion of cuts is going to have to come out of the remaining 42%. That's going to create a real hardship um, to people in our community, especially in our community, which is not one of the most affluent in the state, and we depend on a lot of services to be provided. You know, we've got the most diverse district in the state, we've got 149 languages spoken in our district. So in order for people to engage in our society, they've got to learn English, we've got to have health care, we want to provide good schools. Um, we're going to have to cut $9 billion out of this small segment. It's going to be devastating for our community. The question is not what are we willing to cut. I think the question needs to become what are we willing to raise so that we don't have to cut so much because that's what our de community depends on. This, the size of this has to equal the size of that. So instead of cutting here, what we have to do, because this would be shrinking now, we have to make sure that this doesn't shrink so that this doesn't have to shrink. So at the town hall, what was the feel of the people in your district? Everybody there wanted us to protect their budget item. You know, there's a lot of concern out there. In order to protect the budget item though, uh, if we don't, if this shrinks, that means this has to shrink. If we're going to protect this from shrinking without stealing from one part or the other, the only solution is to grow this. And I think that the people were really buying into that and really understood the problem we're facing.